Hello everyone, it's Clara again and welcome to another online yoga session. Uh, so today's session is going to be about helping to calm the mind um, and also helping to dissolve any stress uh, that we have within our bodies. We're going to start by um, sitting in a cross-legged position. So feel free to have a blanket or um, some cushions available if that sort of helps support you into certain postures. Um, feel free as well as a second option to just um, rest onto your knees if that works best for you. Um, so just make sure your shoulders are over your hips. We're going to begin an exercise called alternate nostril breathing. So what you're going to do is you're going to take out your right hand. So I've got my left hand here because we're going to mirror each other's movements. You're then going to tap your index finger and your middle finger in towards your palm. You're going to have your ring and pinky finger raised up and also your thumb. You're then going to close off your right nostril with your thumb and you're going to take an inhale through your left nostril and then pause and stop and then exhale out of your right nostril. And then inhale through your right nostril and at the end of the breath, pause and then exhale through your left nostril. And then inhale and exhale. Inhale. Feel free to close your eyes if you wish and exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And switch and exhale. Again, inhale, and switch, exhale. Last round, inhale, switch, exhale, and inhale, switch, and exhale. And then just release the hand down, keeping your eyes closed, or simply just gazing down towards the floor with your eyes open. And just take a moment here to connect with your breath. Great, so now slowly open your eyes. Hope you feel a little bit more fresh after doing alternate nostril breathing. Um, so that's really good for helping to rebalance the hemispheres within our brain. And it's a really good one to um, help calm ourselves down, um, so calm our minds. If our minds a little bit, um, I don't know, worried or whether we have a lot of activity in our mind and we just need to recenter our minds, help to gather our thoughts and become more focused, this is a really good exercise to do. Um, it also helps to provide us with a little bit more um, energy as well. So it's a great one to do in the morning. Uh, so we're going to continue by lying onto our backs. So just take, if you have your cushion or blanket, just take it to one side. So you're going to lie on your backs and um, we're just going to uh, start with uh, Shavasana. So just take your hands down and then just take your legs out um, as wide as your mat, turn your toes outwards, and then just close your eyes and breathe. And then just start to sink the weight of your body in towards your mat so on every exhalation. And then just two more rounds, take an inhale. And exhale. And again, inhale. And exhale. Now just take your feet up towards the ceiling. Okay. 
so that your um, heels are kicking out, flexing your toes slightly towards your body. Take your legs out wide, okay, as wide as your shoulders, or a little bit wider. Feel free to bend your legs even closer towards that rib, those rib cages. Okay, then take your hand either onto the outside of your leg or try and see whether you can grip your fingertips onto the outside of your feet. Once you're here, press your fingers in towards your feet and your, your feet in towards your fingers. Okay, so you have a resistance, an isometric resistance between two parts. And then see whether you can rock your back from side to side. So rocking here in a happy baby posture. And then coming to center, you're going to bend your right leg, okay? So drawing a heel in towards the inside of your left hip. And then you're just going to basically straighten out your left leg, okay? Giving the hamstring and calf stretch. And then we're going to change our leg position. So this time, stretching out your right leg. And then taking an inhale and an exhale, stretch your left leg. And inhale and exhale, stretch your right leg. So just warming up our leg muscles here, just helping to stretch the backs of the legs, helping to warm up our hips as well. And then coming back to center, this time take two feet to touch. And try and see whether you can draw the feet in towards the heels, in towards the midline of your body. Tucking your belly in here, so just open up your hips. Feeling that inner groin stretch here. If this is not possible, just feel free to hold on to the outside of your legs, okay? And if you're even your feet out this way, it's absolutely fine. You're still giving yourself a hip stretch. Now you're going to take two legs up so your legs are parallel, okay? Then you're going to basically cross your right leg over your left and then see whether you can recross your feet again, okay? So that the back of your leg is behind your ankle. And then you're going to take your right arm and take it underneath your left. Either give yourself a hug or see where they can wrap your arms into eagle arms, looking towards your thumbs. Okay, relaxing your shoulders down, the so shoulder blades down towards the waist. And then just take an inhale here. And then exhale, you're just going to lift your chest up. Okay, squeeze your belly and then basically lift those knees or hug your legs in together, lift those knees in towards your elbows. Okay, and then relax and inhale. And exhale, squeeze coming up towards the midline of the body. And exhale. And an inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Relax. And exhale, squeeze. And inhale, relax. And exhale, squeeze. Okay, come back into neutral and then just basically uncross the arms. Um, crossing the legs and then taking your legs down, taking your hands either side of your body and then lift your hips up to a bridge pose. So just keep lifting your hips, squeezing your pelvis up. So basically tucking your um, glute muscles inwards, okay, towards your tailbone, squeezing and allowing your quadriceps to come spiraling inwards, okay. Lifting off with your heels of your feet and pressing your palms in towards your mat. And then slowly taking your hips down, take stacking down one vertebrae to the other until your sacrum reaches onto the mat. And then lifting up again, just using your muscles here. So keep squeezing, spiraling your thighs inwards and exhale. And once more, lifting your hips up, squeezing your inner thighs inwards. And, and exhale. And now taking your legs up again. And in this time, you're going to take your left leg over your right. Feel free to just cross it once or try and do a double cross with your legs, okay? Taking your arms up and then you're now going to tuck your left arm underneath your right. Give yourself a hug or take your arms into equal arms. Turning your palms, gazing towards your thumbs, relaxing your shoulders down, okay? Take, try and take your knees in line with your hips to begin with. Take an inhale here, 
And an exhale, taking the knees and elbows to touch, um, basically helping the belly inwards. And an exhale, relaxing the shoulders down and towards the thumbs, relaxing the hips down. And then exhale, taking the knees and elbows together. And then inhale. And then exhale. And an inhale. And exhale. And an inhale. And exhale. And an inhale. And exhale. And inhale. Nice, okay. Now I'm crossing the arms and then I'm crossing the legs. So we're just going to do some exercises just to help support our stomach strength. So we're going to relax our left leg down and then taking our right leg up. We're going to um, hold onto the outer shin by interlocking our hands and pressing that uh, thigh in towards the side of our rib cage, okay, on the right side. So really hugging in and then relaxing your shoulders down. The extended leg, you want to try and um, kick your heel out, flex your toes, so that this quadriceps engage, so that your leg is basically hugging and down through in towards the floor. And then you're just going to hold it there, tucking your belly in, expanding the ribs out towards the side. And then just staying here to breathe. Now slowly taking the um, knee towards um, in line with your chest, and then frame the arms around the leg and lifting your um, chest and head upwards, okay? So you can feel your belly crunching slightly. So if you put your fingers onto your belly, you can feel your belly activated. To activate a little bit more towards the lower region, we're going to basically um, integrate our hip flexor, okay? Now we can feel the whole entire core muscle activated. And then we're going to cycle our legs. So we're going to change our legs over. At the same time, we take our hands overhead. Okay, and then exhale, looking and framing that right leg. And then inhale, taking our arms overhead. And then exhale, framing that right leg. And then inhale. This is really working our core muscles. So basically cycling our legs here, and then looking towards that knee. And then inhale, and exhale. So remember to breathe nice and deeply. The breath is going to basically work in harmony and serve you during this strengthening exercise of the core. And then once more, inhale and exhale. Hold on to that leg, relax your left leg down, squeeze that thigh in towards the ribcage. And then we're going to now change legs this time. Straighten your right leg, so hug that thigh in, left leg in towards the ribs. So basically track that knee towards that, um, that armpit. And then just keep in your tailbone nice and straight, tucking the navel in, okay, so you don't want to rock your hips uh, from side to side. Your hips are uh, basically neutral, okay. And breathe in here, so hugging that thigh nice and tight. So see where they can hug it even, even more, tracking that uh, knee towards your um, inside of your armpits. And now you're going to take that knee so it's in line with your chest. And then you're going to lift your arms, um, so frame your leg, okay? Lift your shoulders, lift your head. And then basically, as if you're trying to get your knee to uh, your nose to touch your knee, but you're not, so, okay? So you're just activating that core muscle there. Then you're going to lift the other leg, okay? And then you're going to basically um, alternate your arms and legs. And then exhale, look towards that knee. And then inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And then inhale. Exhale. Once more, inhale. And exhale. Okay, holding up to that knee. Relax the left leg. Give your leg another squeeze and really track that knee towards that armpit. And now take both knees up, okay? Tuck your hands underneath your knees and then start to roll yourself backwards and forwards, okay? Basically, you're curving your back. So 
So you're making a C shape with your back, and you're basically rolling on to the muscles on either side of the spine. Okay. Keep your t uh, chin tucked in. So we're almost, we're almost basically doing like a seesaw kind of momentum onto our spine. Okay. And then as we get to the top, we're basically going to hold your arms out to frame your legs. Okay. Feel free to straighten your legs into Navasana to boat pose. Make sure you keep your heart lifted so you feel that integration between your sternum and your belly button. So you can feel yourself shaking here. Nice. Now tack your knees in towards your chest. And then basically cross your legs. But then you're going to plant your hands down in front, lift your hips up, and then you're going to see whether you can kick your legs back into a high plank position. Okay? So reinforcing your shoulder girdles. So bend your elbows to begin with, okay? And then you're just going to kick your legs back into your high plank position. Relax your knees, feet. Slightly take your shoulder girdle forward. Relax your chest in between two hands. Come onto your chin. Then relax your thighs. Squeeze your elbows in towards the midline. Lift your heart forward. Relax your shoulders back. Squeeze your back muscles. And then curl yourself up, okay? Coming into a first downward facing dog. And then start to relax your, um, paddle out your feet. So just um, opening up the space behind the um, heels now. And then I'm just going to lift up your right leg Turn your hip out, so bend your knee, okay? Taking it heel towards your left leg. Try and keep your um, shoulders square on. And then we're just gonna do some circles with our knee, okay? Going outwards, keeping that um, hip, um, keeping the belly inwards, okay? And then going the other way with our hip. Nice, and then you're gonna turn yourself back to downward facing dog and then feel free to come into child's pose at any time where you feel that you're getting a little bit restless and you need to take a little bit of a break okay so i'm going to show you child's pose now which some of you are familiar with um, so feel free to have your legs out wide or your legs sort of hugged in closer towards one another it depends on what works for you taking the legs uh, so your arms out forward so you're into your extended child's pose, but feel free to take your arms back where you um, back to hand and rested either side of your feet, coming your fingers inwards and then dropping and rolling your shoulders inwards. And then basically making a little bit of a curvature with your spine. Relaxing the chest onto the thighs. Relaxing the sit bones down towards your heels. And breathe. So this is very good for calming our bodies by helping to restore the body, lowering our heart rates. It's almost like recharging our bodies. So if you feel that you're struggling at all with your yoga practice, or if you feel you need to um, sort of stop any of the uh, postures because you may feel a little bit tired, um, then child's pose is just a great pose to, to sort of, you know, come and reset yourself back into, okay? And then when you feel ready and you feel recharged, um, you can then basically continue with the um, practice. Um, so, you're going to basically tuck your toes, come back into another double dog. Taking your head, your ears in between two arms, lifting your belly in, so extending through the spine, lifting the sit bones up, okay? So imagine that I, um, someone is holding your hips and then basically lifting your hips up, so then you basically have to keep tucking your navel in, 
to keep the spine nice and long even within your lower back. And then you're going to look between two uh, legs. Try and keep your eye line in between two knees and start to paddle out your feet. And now you're going to lift up your left leg, bend your knee, open up your hip, and again, try and keep your shoulders forward, okay? So basically tucking your belly in, allowing two muscles between the two ribs to kind of spiral inwards. And then you're just going to do some circles with your knee, going one way, and then going the other way. So just working the hip here. And then coming forward. And then you're basically going to take that leg down, come back into your downward dog. And then you're just going to walk yourself up to find yourself up to the top of the mat. Take the inhale here, and then exhale and fold and down. So relax on that. Your head is nice and heavy. And then inhale, reaching your arms up. And exhale, sink your hands into your heart center. And then inhale, reaching your arms up, look towards your thumbs, lift your heart forward, take a bit of a back bend, so okay, if you can. And then exhale, just taking your hands down, fingers on my toes, bend your knees. Inhale, coming halfway, relax your shoulders back. Exhale, come back into your plank position. Okay, so feel free to try Chaturanga. So take in, so feel free to go into Cobra where you can drop your knees and then take your chest down. Or feel free to come slightly forward. Then bend your arms, okay, so you're hovering above the mat. Simultaneously, turn your feet, so the back of the feet are resting on the mat. Lift your heart forward, relax your shoulders back, spiral your legs inwards, okay. And then you're going to tuck your toes, come back into your downward facing dog. And breathe. This time you're going to take your left leg up, okay, and then you're going to travel your left foot in between two hands. But then you're going to come into a crescent lunge, so feel free to bend slightly your back leg, okay. Coming forwards on your front leg, so keeping the quadricep nice and strong. Keeping the arms up nice and high. And take an inhale. And exhale. And then turning your back foot, so then you're going to basically open up your arms, and then you're going to basically take your front arm, your palm is facing up, but then you're going to basically dip more into that hip crease, okay? So bend in that front knee, okay? And then you're going to turn that palm facing down, so brushing your arm in there, okay? As you, um, as you basically try and get a deeper uh, bend in that leg. Then you're going to sweep this arm forward and look overhead, looking towards the hands. And then keep revolving your stomach, so keep tucking the belly in and revolving your, your rib cage. Okay, it's almost like spiraling your two rib cages in towards one another. And then breathe. So it's just stretching on the side of your body. And then you're just going to relax that arm down. You're going to take your arm to the inside of your leg, okay? Feel free if you need to support yourself, take the other hand down. So take two legs, uh, two hands, sorry, in between uh, the inside of your leg. Then you're gonna basically take this leg, okay, back, and you're gonna turn onto your side. Now, if this doesn't really work for you, doing side, side plank, you can take this leg forward, okay? And then just make sure you keep your hip up. And then you just basically keep two hips forward and reach your arm up. Feel free to come into your side plank and then basically turn this hip forward and lift your two hips up. Turn and look towards your thumb and breathe. So this is good for helping strength. And then coming back into your high plank, okay? Feel free to lower it down on your knees if you wish, or to come back into Chaturanga, so inhale, upward facing dog, and then exhale, down facing dog. And 
we just pat out the feet here just for a moment. And now you're going to take up your left leg, bend your knee, heart that thigh, in towards the chest. Take your knee foot forward, uh, um, keep your uh, back foot forward for a moment, and then you're going to come into your crescent lunge, lifting your heart forwards. Feel free to bend that back leg, and then turn that back foot. Take your arms out, and then you're basically going to take your arm, your forearm, into that on um, onto the top of that thigh, turn your palm, open up your hip, okay, and then sweep your arm over your face, and then taking your arm overhead, looking towards the hands, so you feel that nice side stretch. Keep tucking the navel in, keep revolving the two ribs in towards each other, so you feel that nice side stretch in between your waistline on the side of your body. And then from here, you're then going to go back into your side plank position. So you feel free to take two hands down, planting your left hand down, taking your foot back, and then coming to your high plank. Feel free, as a modification, to take your other foot forward, keeping your hip lifted up. Keep looking towards that thumb. And breathe. And then coming back into your downward facing dog. And now you're going to take your right leg up. You're going to bend your leg. And now you're going to take your foot forwards, okay? You're then going to basically lift yourself up. And you're just going to brush this leg slightly bit more forwards until you are able to stand onto your right leg and then lift your left leg up and then hug that in towards your um in towards your rib cage okay with the standing leg so i'm just going to turn to the front so you guys can see me into the standing leg and then from here try and cross your leg over so we're going to basically come into a standing pigeon posture and then you're just going to lift your arms up and then just open up your hips. Okay, take your hands in to your heart center and then just sort of gazing down past your nose, looking down. And now coming up, this time take your leg and you'll even take it to the inside of your calf muscle or the inside of your thigh. And in keeping, sorry, I'm going to do some advance here. So keeping your um, hips forward, okay? So you want to basically just turn that hip out, and then you want to just try and track the knee down, okay? And then just ha having your hands in front of heart center. And just breathe in. So if you lose your balance, do not worry. It happens to most of us, <laughs> even if we've been practicing for over 10 years. And then just keep breathing. And slowly taking that leg down. Give your other leg a shake, okay? And then take an inhale, reach your arms up. And then exhale, forward and down. And then inhale, looking halfway. Exhaling, passing your hands down, come into your high plank. Feel free to come into your cobra by dropping your knees. All your chaturanga by taking your heart slightly forwards, bending your elbows, lifting your heart forwards, coming up with dog or your cobra, tucking your toes, lifting your hips, taking your right leg here, and then basically taking that leg forwards and then coming into your crescent lunge, and then slowly brushing that back leg forwards and then hugging. Holding on towards the thigh. So I'm just going to turn towards the front so you can see me. So hugging on towards that thigh. And then you're going to turn the leg into half lotus position. And then you're going to bend and reach your arms up. 
Feel free to take your hands in towards your heart if that works better for you. Gazing down past your nose, just looking straight ahead. And then from here, just going to slightly lift up your hips, lift up your chest. And then you're going to take your foot wherever it feels uh, comfortable. So you go underneath your knee or above your knee, okay? If you're um, able to take your foot up high towards the inside of five, see whether you can get that heel in towards um, the very top, okay, of your groin. And then you're just going to keep trying your hips forward. Keep tucking your navel in, okay, and then keep rotating these ribs as well. So you're basically trying to get the whole torso to connect and work in harmony with one another, okay. Taking the knee down, so this is very good for your knee joint, helping to stretch the rex femoris muscle here. And then taking the hands and running heart center into your tree pose. Another option is to take your arms out and just sort of hold up here as if you're growing into a towering tree. Keeping your balance here. And then slowly take yourself back out. You're basically going to tap that leg back in and then drop it back down. Come back to the top of your mat. So take an inhale and then exhale. And then inhale, looking forwards. Exhale and taking your uh, legs down and then just dropping your knees, dropping your chest in between two hands. And then we're just going to, um, from here, do um, a uh, bow pose. So you're going to basically take your legs in the bed position. Now, either just hold onto your hips and then just lift your heart, okay, if you're unable to reach your feet. Okay, so it's just one way of doing it. You're still getting a little bit of a back bend. Um, however, if you want to, uh, if you are able to hold on to your feet, lift your heart, okay, start by taking your chin down, and then by basically squeezing your inner thighs in towards one another, okay? And then just making sure your heels are sort of in line with, the, um, with your sit bones. And then you're going to, as you take the next inhale and exhale, you're going to lift your heart and then basically kick your feet in towards your hands and then your hands in towards your feet. And try and keep lifting your heart, lifting your legs. This is very good for stretching out the quads. And breathing. So just stay in here, just a couple more breaths. And release your knees down. And release your feet. And then taking one hand, so move your right hand and left hand on top. And then turning, looking over towards your right, taking two toes together to open up the uh, base of your back. And then coming back, and then taking your hands into towards your chest, taking your two toes back, lifting your heart forward so into your cobra position. Okay, so keep lifting your heart, keep taking your thumbs so you basically feel your upper back lifted. So you feel that squeezing sensation in between your mid back region. Okay, and then now we're just going to peel ourselves up. And then we're going to, um, just going to basically help to um, also protect and work our spine by doing some cows and cows. So taking your knees in line with your hands, sagging your belly, lifting your heart forward, tucking your sit bones up, taking an inhale. Exhale, tucking your chin in towards your chest and then around your spine. Exhale, let's do the cat pose. And then inhale, looking forward, taking your heart forward into your cow. And then exhale, surrounding your chin inwards, you're rounding your spine, tucking your navel in, tucking your tailbone down. So this is really good for rounding your back. So basically just working our spine, helping to um, lubricate those little um, sort of spinal discs but also the um, sort of 
intrinsic muscles that um, sort of attach to those little protrusions on either side of our vertebrae. So breathe in out and breathe in out. And then slowly tucking your toes, coming back into your downward facing dog, paddling out your feet. And now just going to find your way to a seated position. So take your hands out wider, see whether you can cross your legs halfway and then lift your hips up. So lift your um, hip flexors and reinforce it in with your stomach muscles and your pelvic floor. And then you can basically um, get your hips a little bit more further forward. So let me just show you that um, a little bit quicker, okay? So you start in your downward facing dog, you're going to widen your hands. You're then going to basically cross your legs and at the same time use your hip flexors to bring in towards that midline. So you're helping to basically um, travel your hips forwards, okay? Um, so we're going to do the last pose of today, which is um, our shoulder stands. Um, so if you are practicing shoulder stand already, uh, feel free to come into shoulder stand. Um, the basics are, is um, if you are uh, new to shoulder stand or you haven't been practicing for a while and you find it difficult to take your, um, your hips up, then the best thing is, is to find a wall and you're going to come close towards that wall and find a blanket as well if you can and maybe even a cushion. Okay, so you're just, just there for extra support. You're going to find a wall and then you're going to come, you're going to take your hip very close to that wall, okay? You're then going to come to your elbows and then lift up your hips. And then you're basically going to turn, okay, so it's, you're literally trying to turn yourself so that your, your hips are very close to, towards the wall. So now your, your, your hips are high. Now you're going to find your blanket and take it underneath your two shoulders and maybe you can take a pillow here, okay, or you can take a pillow underneath your um, mid-back. So that just kind of helps lift your hips up even more. So again, using these support brackets is really good for helping to lift up the hip. So that's one way, and even doing that is beneficial for our bodies because all that venous blood, so the blood that basically um, needs to be reoxygenated, um, needs to go back into our lungs to expel carbon dioxide, um, that is now coming towards our heart in order to be reoxygenated within our bodies. Okay, so it's a very, very healthy pose. It also helps to um, take away any swelling within the ankles, um, helps with um, our uh, capillaries within our legs. Um, so it's, it's a very beneficial pose um, doing even half of a, of a shoulder stance. Now from here, you can basically press your feet and then try and get one knee up close towards your body. So just trying to get, using that momentum, trying to get your hips up, okay? So this is for those, uh, you know, still trying to get their um, hips up. So you can just basically work on that, okay? And then finally, you're just gonna try and squeeze your belly and hug your thighs, so lifting your hips up, okay? And then pressing your palms down and seeing whether you can start rolling onto your shoulders. So that's the next step, okay? Once you feel comfortable with that, you can then start to um, integrate that with um, your, um, with a, a shoulder stand. So shoulder stand, you wanna to come towards the front of the mat, and then you're going to roll into your back. Simultaneously, you're going to, as you start to roll onto your back, so you start to curve your back by lifting your hips. Okay, pressing into your palms and then rolling onto your shoulders to the point that maybe your toes come back, okay? Or maybe your hips are really nice and high, you can bend your knees, taking your two knees in towards your forehead. Then, start to roll onto your shoulders, okay? And then make sure that your hips are up so that you're able to hold on to 
the base of your back with your hands. Squeezing your belly in and then start to lift your knees, okay? And then start to lift your legs. And just make sure your shoulders are directly um, in line with your elbows. So maybe you need to tuck your elbows slightly a bit more towards your body. Taking your chin in towards your chest. And to come out, you want to basically bend one knee and the other knee towards the forehead. And then taking two hands back, okay, and then rolling up one vertebrae to the next. Same time, straighten up your legs so you're reinforcing those hip flexors to basically manage to take and travel the weight of your legs back down towards your mat. So using your hip flexors here, using your abdomen to travel your legs back down. Then start to find your way towards the middle of the mat. So you want to basically start to almost like wriggle yourself a little bit more further up towards your mat. Reset your pose if you need to. So as a counteraction pose, because we've just basically rounded our back, we want to basically now start to lift our spine, so flex our spine the other way. So we're going to um, come into a fish pose by bending your legs and then lifting up your hips, enough room to take the backs of your hands underneath your sit bones, okay? So try and line two thumbs up together and then you're just going to relax your hips and then you're going to relax your um, glute muscles over your hands. Then relax your feet down. Try and take your feet close towards one another. Then you're going to start to push with your elbows. So push from the floor with your elbows and then try and tuck your elbows in a little bit more closer towards your body. Then you're going to start to lift and then see whether you can lift your head back, okay? So that you start to rest your head onto the crown of the head, lifting the heart forwards and lifting the heart upwards. So this is very good for opening up the chest, very good for activating the heart muscles. Very good for uh, flexing the spine in the opposing direction from what the shoulder stand is doing to our spine. So the shoulder stand is extending our spine, this one's flexing our spine. And then looking up, so taking the head up first, and then now reposition yourself so you're allowing your shoulders to come down. Now take your feet back up. Lift your hips and then take your hands and out underneath your hips. And then taking your um, feet down and then finding yourself um, your way into Shavasana by curling your hands, turning your hands up, curling your fingers in. Feel free if, this, um, if you need some extra comfort or support whilst you're in uh, your Shavasana. Your corpse pose, you can take your pillow underneath the base of your back, maybe get a blanket, okay? So those that have, um, you know, problems with their lower back, need some support, they can have here, put your hips up. Those that have problems with their neck, maybe take a um, blanket underneath the neck. So this is really comfortable. Or if you um, feel that your head is okay, and if your back is okay, you can use a blanket to cover yourself in order to provide yourself with some warmth and comfort whilst you are in this rest and posture. So I know in the winter months, um, a lot of people have a tendency to um, cover themselves, especially in studios with blankets, okay? So this is like more of an indulgent way of doing yoga. But it just sort of helps to provide us with warmth and comfort. So this is only optional, by the way. You don't have to have a blanket over you if you feel okay with how you are without one. And 
time and just taking a moment to breathe and absorb all the benefits you can receive from today's practice. So just taking a moment to be quiet, still. So Shavasana is very good for helping to um, enable ourselves to feel calm, helping us to um, absorb the benefits that we've received from these postures, from doing these asanas. Um, it also helps with um, with people that suffer with insomnia. So sometimes just doing a few calming postures and then Shavasana before you go to bed is, is a great way to sort of wind yourself down. And then slowly Taking yourself towards the side of your body, you want to basically tap your two knees in towards your chest, roll them onto your side. Again, feel free if you have a, a pillow available to take it underneath your head. Taking your hands towards one another, stacking your legs over on top of one another, in line with your hips. And then just stack in one palm over the other. Take a moment here to just rest onto the sideline of the body. And then when you're ready, just slowly start to make your way up to a comfortable seated posture. Feel free to practice four locus if that's um, within your practice. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining today. I hope you feel um, better, revitalized. Um, you may feel a little bit warm within your abdomen region and within the size of your ribs, so your obliques. Uh, the reason being is because today we did do um, a lot of postures that um, help to strengthen our core muscles and also our hip flexors. Um, so yeah, so continue to practice um, and um, I will do another video for you guys next week. Um, and for those that are continuing to practice shoulder stands, um, continue to, to you know, practice at home. Um, at least uh, between these sessions, try and practice it maybe one or two times um, on your own um, at home. Um, just to sort of get used to the postures um, so that your body can gradually adapt um, to these uh, new positions. Anyway, that's all from me. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next week. Namaste.